Welcome, amazing one. And let's solve this tricky Harvard entrance exam question together. It's just so easy. Now, when you see this kind of question, how do you intend to solve it? Are you the type that will just say x divided by 2 to the power of 6 is equal to 3 to the power of 6? The powers are the same. Just equate the basis. So you have this. To get x, you multiply both sides by 2. And this will be multiplied by 2 so that your x will give you 6. Just know that 6 is one of the solutions of x because what you have here, you see that this is raised to the power of x. So this is giving you a polynomial of degree 6. It means we expected to have 6 solutions for x. Join me as I teach you how to get them. And don't forget to tell us how it helps in the comment. Let's do this together. So we're going to begin this with our solution. Let's repeat what we have. x divided by 2 to the power of 6 is equal to 3 to the power of 6. Now, what you need to do is to remember for every a over b raised to the power of m, it's always a to the power of m divided by this. So if you apply this rule here, we are going to now have x to the power of 6 divided by 2 to the power of 6 is 3 to the power of 6. Interesting. Now, what do we do? We are going to clear this division by 2 to the power of 6. And to remove this, multiply both sides by 2 to the power of 6. So we multiply this by 2 to the power of 6. And we also do same here. And remember, this is divided by 1. So this can take off this. And we are left with. So we keep solving to have x to the power of 6 is what we have here is 3 to the power of 6 multiplied by 2 to the power of 6. Now, remember also, for every a, b raised to the power of m, is a to the power of m, b to the power of m. So if you apply this rule here, we are going to now have x to the power of 6 is equal to, this will be 3 multiplied by 2 is raised to the power of 6. So keep solving, we have x to the power of 6 is equal to 6 raised to the power of 6. Now, what do you do? This is positive. So we're going to take it to the left side. It becomes x to the power of 6 minus 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 0. Now we can recreate this. We can adjust this to give us x is x raised to power 3 raised to power of 2. We know too well that for every a to the power of m raised to power of n, it's always a to the power of m multiplied by n. So if this true exists, then you see that when you multiply 3 and 2, it gives you 6. So we can rewrite this to be in this form. It's just to help us in what we are solving. We can also do same here. 6 cubed will be raised to the power of 2 and is equal to 0. Now, did you observe anything? You observe that this has led you to difference of two squares, you see. So quickly remember that identity and we have for every a squared minus b squared is a plus b into a minus b. This is our difference of two squares. So if you look at this, you see that this is of this form. This can be a and this can be our b. So applying this rule here, we now have x cubed plus 6 cubed into x cubed minus 6 cubed is equal to 0. Now what do you do? Remember for every a, b to be equal to 0, either a is 0 or b is equal to 0. So let's work with this first. We have x cubed plus 6 cubed is equal to 0. Now, if you look at this, this is your sum of two cubes. And it quickly reminds you of this identity for each time you have this. It's always equal to a plus b into a squared minus ab plus b squared. So let's apply this identity on the left side to help us to solve. And for you to have to watch through this point, it shows what you're interested. Don't forget to Give this a like. If you are still new, hit the subscription button. Helping us to share this video will help the algorithm to send it to more people. Let's keep doing this to have x plus 6 into x squared 
minus this multiplies is multiplying this. So we have x multiplies 6. Then our b is 6. So we have 6 squared and is equal to 0. So what do we do? This is giving us x plus 6 into x squared. Multiply, you have negative 6x. 6 squared is 6 times 6, giving us 36 is equal to 0. Now, remember what we stated here. If AB is 0, it means either of them is 0. So we can apply it here. We have x plus 6 is equal to 0. To get x here, you subtract 6 from both sides. When you do that, x gives you, this will give you negative 6. And this gives you the first value of x. Now let's take this. We have x squared minus 6x plus 36 is equal to 0. This is your quadratic equation because the highest power of x is 2. So quickly remember your formula. x is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now if you apply this formula on this, remember your a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. Your b is the coefficient of x, negative 6, and your c is the constant, which is 36. So we're going to plug these values in this to now have x is equal to negative, our b is negative 6, plus or minus square root of b is negative 6 squared, minus 4, a is 1, multiplied by our c is 36. So this is divided by 2 times our a is 1. So we keep solving x is equal to, this gives us positive 6, square root of, this will give us 36. When you multiply this, it gives you negative 144 is divided by 2. So we have x is equal to 6 plus or minus, subtract this, it gives you negative 108 is divided by 2. Keep solving. x is equal to 6 plus or minus square root of. Now remember, this is the same as negative 1 multiplied by this divided by 2. And it gives us x is equal to 6 plus or minus. Now when you have root of a multiplied by b, is root of a multiplied by root of b. So we can split this to have root of negative 1 multiplied by root of 108 and is divided by 2. So we keep solving. This is the same as x is equal to 6 plus or minus root of negative 1. Now this 106, 108 sorry, has a perfect square in it and the perfect square is 36 because 36 times 3 is what gives you 108. So we're going to have this divided by 2. So we have x is 6 plus or minus square root of negative 1 multiplied by root of 36. Split this, multiplied by root of 3 is divided by 2. Now, this also gives us x is 6 plus or minus. Whenever you have square root of negative 1, it's always represented with an imaginary unit i. Now, remember that square root of 36 is 6 and we have root 3 divided by 2. Keep solving. x is equal to 6. You can use this to divide each. So we have this plus or minus 6 root 3i divided by 2. And this gives us x is, divide this, you have 3 plus or minus. This will divide this, we have 3 root 3i. And this gives us the second and third values of x. Now, remember, we left a statement behind that. So we have to recall, we stated that also x cubed minus 6 cubed should also be equal to 0. So let's solve this equation. Just remember that this is now your difference of two cubes. And whenever you have this, it reminds you that for every a cubed plus b cubed, it is a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. So we're going to apply this on this cubic equation to get the, rest, the remaining values of x. And to do that, we have 
x minus 6 into x squared plus multiply a b is multiplying these two which will give us 6x plus our b is 6 and we are having 6 squared is equal to 0. So we now have x minus 6 into x squared plus 6x. This gives us that 6 is equal to 0. So remember, these two means that x minus 6 is 0. To get x, add 6 to both sides. So when you do that, x gives you, add this, you have 6. And this is the fourth value of x. Now let's work with this. We have x squared plus 6x plus 36 is equal to 0. Let's repeat what we did in solving the previous quadratic equation. So remember that our a is 1, b here now is 6, and our c remains 36. So we are going to plug it into our quadratic formula to have x is equal to, remember our formula is this, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by this. So we're going to have negative of our b is 6 plus or minus square root of 6 squared minus 4. a is 1 multiplied 36 is equal to 2 multiplies 1. So we have x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus. This gives us 36 and this also 144 divided by 2. So we keep solving x is equal to negative 6. Remember, when we subtracted this, it gave us negative 108 and is divided by 2. x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus. Remember, for simplifying this, we got 6 root 3i and is divided by 2. So we have x is equal to negative 6 divided by 2 plus or minus 6 root 3i divided by 2. And it gives us x is, divide this, you have negative 3 plus or minus. This device, you have 3 root 3i. And this gives us the fifth and sixth values of x. Now, let's gather the values of x together. So the first value of x, we got negative 6. The second value of x, we got 3 plus 3 root 3i. Then the third value of x, we got 3 minus 3 root 3i. Then the fourth value of x, we got positive 6. And then the fifth value of x gave us negative 3 plus 3 root 3i. This is the fifth value. And finally, the sixth value of x, negative 3 minus 3 root 3i. So this gives us the six values of x, which we said was what we were supposed to have at the beginning of this tutorial. Now, these two values are the real solutions because they can be found on a number line. And these four are complex because they contain both the real part and the imaginary part. And I hope you really learned something new today. Don't forget to tell us how much. Give this a like, share so that others will learn with you. If you are still new, hit the subscription button. We have a lot to give to you every day. Thank you and see you in our next class. Bye-bye.